Hello, everyone. My name is Helena Fontes, and I'm running for the Massachusetts Governor's Council, District 6. As a first time candidate, my decision to run was inspired by my own lived experiences with the mass judicial system as the mother of someone experiencing a mental health crisis, as a mental health um, recovery program administrator and community organizer. My journey to this point in time started when my oldest son, who is now 23, was only 16 and experiencing a mental health crisis. At the time, I called around to all the mental health oriented programs in my hometown of Lynn and surrounding communities looking for help. Um, but because the wait times were six to nine months and I felt that his help was um, more immediately needed, um, <clears throat> in a final desperate attempt, I reached out to the Lynn DCF office and I said, can you help me? My son is in trouble. I'm worried and I'm concerned. I don't know what to do. The woman that I spoke to um, on the phone that day explained to me that if my son um, was not in imminent danger to himself or to others, there was nothing they could do. Well, within a week of that phone call, my son was involved in a situation um, that resulted in an encounter with law enforcement and his first incarceration as a youth. I learned from that experience that one incarceration leads to others and that turning point for me personally um, was the day I was sitting in his second sentencing hearing. He was at this time 18 years old. The defense attorney um, was reading a memorandum in court that consisted of family history going back to my childhood up to everything I had accomplished at that point. And as I'm sitting in the courtroom that day, and listening to the attorney hyper-focus on um, my own childhood adversity that I had to overcome and speaking to the fact that I was a, a someone who grew up in the foster care system, the what was suggested and implied that day in the courtroom was that this incident was somehow my fault. There was no mention of his mental health condition nor the fact that I had reached out for help. While that was happening simultaneously, my son is in handcuffs and shackles. He's being escorted out of the courtroom. And I so vividly recall the look of disgust and disdain on that judge's face. And leaving the courtroom that day, I told myself, I'm going to do something about this, that that didn't feel right and my son was not accurately represented that day. I am running for the governor's council because I believe it's one of Massachusetts most important elected offices that no one has ever heard of. The eight member council is responsible for reviewing and approving or rejecting new judges, clerks, and members of the parole board. The council plays a key role in shaping the quality and integrity of the Commonwealth's justice system. And my candidacy is about bringing new voices to the governor's council that reflect the diversity of our state. And when I say diversity, I'm not just talking about race, although never in the council's history has a person of color served. Diversity also applies to the occupational backgrounds and lived experiences of the council members. What I bring to the table is years of experience as the program director of a mental health nonprofit. My program serves individuals in the areas of urban Massachusetts, most profoundly impacted by aggressive policing, high crime rates, and a relative lack of empathy on the part of the criminal courts. Our nation is undergoing a great awakening at this moment. Um, many of us are waking up to the reality that our current justice system is not working for the many. The current composition of the Governor's Council reflects only one of Massachusetts populations and does not include any representation of those who have been disproportionately impacted. There is a serious lack of awareness on the Governor's Council across the state 
and I believe to our own detriment. I believe that appointing judges from diverse cultures and backgrounds should and must be a priority of the Governor's Council. To achieve that goal, I plan to approach the nominating process in a whole new way. The current process of nomination and appointment focuses solely on the qualifications and experience of the nominees, and it does not take into consideration the constituency or the needs of the community they'd be serving in. A full understanding of the racial and socioeconomic composition of the constituency, combined with the knowledge and needs of that community, will be front and center in my decision making. Once this information has been determined, working with and in collaboration with individuals and organizations in that community, the types of candidates deemed to be best matched will be clearly stated and only those individuals will receive my vote of approval. I'd like to take a moment to share a few statistical facts regarding the current state of the Massachusetts justice system and where we are today and why change on the council is so important. Incarceration in Massachusetts has quadrupled in less than 50 years. Half of all those incarcerated in our state right now have not even been convicted of anything yet. And this is because the judges appointed by this council routinely deny bail or set unreasonably high bail on poor and nonviolent offenders. Our state incarcerates more than twice as many people per capita as our allies in the UK, more than three times that of France. I, I um, note these countries because they have similar diverse populations and social problems as we do. However, our courts impose sentences worthy of violent offenses on nonviolent individuals. People of color are five times more likely to be incarcerated than white people in Massachusetts. And this is not because they're committing five times more the crimes. It's because the judges in our court representative of us, nor do they understand our needs and challenges. Out of 374 district court seats, only 40 of those are held by minority justices, and of 82 superior court seats, only three African-American women justices and two Hispanic. In our parole board, five of those individuals have law enforcement backgrounds, and there's only one clinical psychologist. Is it any wonder then that 90% of parole violations that result in re-incarceration are technical in nature, not criminal, and for minor offenses like failing to pay parole fees or failure to find employment in a timely manner. In summary, there is something seriously wrong here and the finger can and should be pointed to systems that were designed in negligence in the absence of all of Massachusetts diverse populations. I'm running to bring a change that's long overdue here in Massachusetts, create balance in a racially imbalanced justice system, and to ensure that Massachusetts' most vulnerable populations are not penalized for suffering from mental health or other intellectual diagnoses. I thank you for your time, and I ask for your vote on September 1st. Thank you.